It's a lovely Cooper Road mini morning. Those birds are not sound effects. Those are real birds out here. A quick peek. Alright, adjust the light. There's one little project and here's today's. I'm going to try to show. This is in talking to Mark, our friend Mark, over the last week or two about clutch adjustments. We got some good sunlight here. Let's see if we can show the gist of how these clutches adjust. And here's the extent of our technology. Here's this, uh, probably one of these uh, phone holders for various devices. Our lovely assistant seems to have a drawer full of these. You just cut the little ear off here so this phone sets into it and I can hold it places. But right now we're handheld, even lower tech. So these clutches, and I hope the light works in here. This is the pre-verto style, of course. You got the long arm here, the slave is mounted at the top of the housing. So I tell people, you know, 15 or 20 thousandths of free play just to keep the throw-up bearing, which is mounted on this end of this plunger inside, off the spinning flywheel and clutch assembly. So even with the spring on here, you can just grab it, and you can see that I can move it out about that much just with hand pressure. You can see the distance there? just a little bit to keep that throwout bearing from spinning with the flywheel at all times. And you can set that distance right here. So you essentially you just pull against it, find where it touches the throwout bearing when it pivots, and give yourself 15 or 20 thousandths right here. And you can see in my case I forgot to put the little eyelet on the... it's hard to see back in here, but there's usually a little eyelet on the end of this bleeder screw that holds the return spring. So I thought, well, all right, I'll just kind of line it up, and it went to my stabilizer bar. I've got this adjustable bar, although really most of these end up being all the way in to be the standard length. So don't think that you'll be able to move the engine around much. It'll have to be all the way in to keep stuff from hitting the grill up here. And I do have this also, this adjustable slave push rod, which is nice because a lot of times as these parts down in here wear... Um, sometimes this clevis gets a bit worn out. It's just nice to be able to lengthen that because that's one of the easiest ways to establish this distance if you don't have the range for it. A lot of people say, well, I, I can't get 15 thousandths here. It's either there's a, too much slop, I'm wasting too much pedal travel. So there's usually something else going on with wear. And the adjustable piece here can kind of give you that little bit of leeway that you can fine tune. But you can also lengthen the stock piece a number of ways. You can stick a nut behind it. You can just you can do all sorts of things to experiment to see what your problem is. And on this car here, by the way, pardon the Chevy orange and the burgundy background. I'm not sure. I think the engine got built before the car. And you can see in here that our clutch pedal is nothing crazy. People say, well, geez, I don't like the pedals aren't even. You can see the clutch is quite a bit lower than the brake here. And there's not a lot of wasted, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm on the throttle bearing right there. There's no, like, halfway down before you've engaged, because then you don't have enough remaining travel to pop the diaphragm spring. But you can see here, even with two fingers, there's my free play. And now it's doing its work. And really, by here, it's released. And you still have room to go to the carpet. And we can see that... <clears throat> You know, that pedal's quite a bit lower. I think they, they would like this on purpose. Uh, some people say, well, no, you've been, it's been bent, it's been pummeled too hard. And that's one fix, is if you just don't have enough travel, is to take the pedal up here, heat it up with a torch or something, and apply a little bit of twist to it. Good idea to take it out of the car to do that. But that'll gain some of that back, so you have a greater distance to the floor. Some people prefer a lot more free play up here, so it doesn't engage quite so high up. But I like the feel of this one. And, you know, we talked a lot about the short shift and whatever else. This one has the short shift, which all it does is it just jacks this pivot point up so that you have a longer throw underneath, which basically makes that have to move this less. And I don't know if I'll be able to shift it with the car sitting still, but there's neutral. And you see, this is a very, very tight setup. And it does work nicely if you get it all hooked up right. First second. I mean, it is. That's it. 
neutral, very sure where it is. Now, if there's a lot of wear and junk down below, there's not enough travel with that longer rod to engage the gates and reverse cleanly. So people give these things a bad name and they'll say, well, the short shift kit doesn't work. It does work if you pay attention and understand what it's trying to do and work with it.